Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be the start of hopefully a few videos in this sort of style. This is something I want to test because it's something that I feel like I could actually do pretty well with on the channel because I kind of just feel like I need to go back to my roots with content creation. I really am not being, you know, really incentivized to make the kind of content that I've been trying to put out over the last couple of days as far as, you know, card reviews and stuff. The, the bulk of this channel was built on trying to play decks as well as I possibly could and trying to get insightful commentary on how to play them in certain matchups and stuff like that. That's how this channel was built. That's the backbone of how it was built. And it's one of those things that I probably just have to go back and uh, embrace, hopefully. And playing on Dueling Book with their replay feature specifically seems like a good way to do that, especially if I'm going to be playing these matches live on stream. Uh, it's something that I can just do to include some people that want to be, you know, included and all that sort of stuff. So this video is going to be World Chalice versus True Draco, a full match so that you can sort of see the dynamic of how this deck tries to play against that matchup, which is arguably its worst matchup. It's very hard. It's a very difficult matchup. Uh, I mean, World Chalice pretty much struggles against any deck that's able to put out at least one disruption going first and Chalice tries to go second against that. That's why you do kind of have to play hand traps, even though you want this deck to be as streamlined as a going first deck as possible. Luckily, the hand traps at least fill a, you know, a dual purpose of being cards that you could potentially discard to add back Lee from your graveyard for. So if they are like dead in your hand, you can potentially turn them into combo pieces. Uh, that's ex especially true with like the Heralds and the Eva specifically because Herald is a level 2 light fairy for transmodify, so that is something that can be made live. Uh, but this is a build that I was testing on my live stream that I did last Saturday, uh, and this is going to be a match that I played during that live stream, and I'm going to be giving you some commentary over that. So, basically, this is what I've been testing uh, the deck as. It's basically like you can see my entire side deck pattern. There's very clearly cards that I side when I know I'm going second, and cards that I side when I know that I'm going first, like Called by the Graves and Anti-Spells. Typically, you don't want to overside going first with this deck, and you want to take out the cards that are minimalistic value in certain matchups and replace those with better cards. Uh, Anti-Spell is pretty much a good blanket, all-around good card in most of the matchups you're going to play against. You know, Pendulum, Draco, all that sort of stuff. And then you have the obvious cards that are, you know, swapping out cards that are not good going second, like the Kyoto Waterfronts, uh, the Eva Package... Uh, and like taking out like a transmodify or something and sw and siding into you know more hand traps taking out the waterfronts putting in an extra kaiju so you could potentially you know have good you know things against the masterpiece matchup which you're about to see and then cards like evenly matches and twin twisters and Raigeki dark hole to be just you know clearing cards there's definitely a lot more cards you want to side out when you're going second than going first but I'm gonna stop talking about this deck uh, this is my most current list if you're interested uh, but I'm just gonna stop yammering on about it because you should know how this deck operates at least a little bit by now if you've watched any of the stuff on my channel uh, and if that's what you're here for because I do do a lot of world chalice based content so let's just jump straight into the first game and I can let you see how this match played out. So going into the first game, I got very, very lucky winning Rock, Paper, Scissors. I had no idea what the matchup was at this specific point in time, but you obviously have to really go first with this deck in order to have the highest yield possible. Now my hand isn't that amazing, but luckily I get to upstart into a Venus. And so that's obviously broken, right? Uh, I could have drawn multiple cards there to make that live though. I could have drawn into uh, potentially Brilliant Fusion. I could have drawn to Brilliant Fusion. I could have drawn into uh, Transmodify to Transmodify with a Shine Ball. There's a few different things I could have drawn to make that hand really good and live, but Venus was pr definitely the best draw because Brilliant Fusion would have been a really weird play uh, involving reviving Venus with Aurum. I would have had to use my World Legacy World Chalice early. Now here, the combo I did was I just went straight with Venus plus World Legacy World Chalice into Saryuja uh, because I don't know if my opponent has Ash Blossom or not. And I don't want to risk, you know, having Saryuja hit, get hit by Ash later because Venus plus World Legacy World Chalice is a better combo than what I performed in this instance. Uh, and I'd also actually forgotten the combo, uh, a specific part of the combo of how it, you know, is structured because I hadn't played this deck for over a week at the point uh, which I started the live stream. This was the very first game on my live stream. After this game was over, I went to my channel on the live stream and was like, alright, what's the point that I can't remember? on how this ends up being an Ngirsu draw three and then a Saryuja draw four, put three back. It's, you know, even when you play this deck nearly as much as I have and as much as I do, you tend to forget things if you don't touch it for an extended period of time. So I ended up only going for a Saryuja draw four 
and then went for an Ingirsu draw two afterwards, both of which, both of those plays being masked from Ash Blossom, the Saryuja draw being masked from Ash because of World Legacy World Chalice, didn't really care if my World Legacy World Chalice gets ashed if I'm resolving Saryuja, and then the Ningirsu was masked from Ash Blossom, uh, which at this point I'm positive he didn't have because he would have definitely ashed the World Legacy World Chalice, but that's besides the point. So I end with a set e Telly and a Kyoto Waterfront, and this is the point where I find out that I'm playing against True Draco. I negate his first Disciples with my Gamma Seal, and then when he plays his second Disciples, I flip over my E-Telly, summoning Ghost Ogre for my deck. And this is why I really like E-Telly in this deck. During your own turn, it's a combo piece to get you chosen by the World Chalice as a vanilla, as a starter card potentially. But then on your opponent's turn, you can set it, and it both puts counters on Waterfront and summons Ghost Ogre from your deck, which means that it's going to hit a face-up card, which then puts two more counters on Waterfront because of Ghost Ogre and the face-up card leaving. So there we had a Chain Link 6 interaction where he tribute summons for Ignis with a trap, uses the trap to try and pop Gamma Seal, and then I negate that. Ignis triggers, I negate Ignis with my Herald of the Orange Light, and then he goes Chain Link 5 Chalice on my Gamma Seal. I still have two counters on my Waterfront, of which I then just remove those for the Gamma Seal. So, it's a very clean cut game one. I'm able to out all six of his cards with smart usage of my Waterfront and stuff, even though my Waterfront wasn't maxed out on counters during his turn. So now he gets to start and he gets to go first, post siding. And as you can see, my hand sucks. It has two Shine Balls in it. He summons an Expector Border, which is strange. I kind of thought that he was playing the Amano Iwato build, just because, like, that is the best build. Uh, but he might be very smart. He might be siding the Inspector Borders for when he knows that he's going first, uh, or he's just playing a subpar build. But this is definitely information that I have going into the next game that I could be playing against someone who's not playing a mono. Uh, it's very possible something that could be happening. But so he ends with Inspector Border, resolves Desires, resolves Pot of Duality and Card of Demise, and draws two off Heritage. Ends up discarding a you know a duplicate Duality and a Masterpiece. And at this point, my hand has two different ways to turn off that Inspector Border, but I really don't want to turn off the Inspector Border. One, because I know that he has an Apocalypse set, because he searched it, so I know that it's live to at least half monsters. Um, and I'd want to kill the Majesty Maiden before I really trigger it, because that Majesty Maiden is being turned off by his own border, and if I let him search, he's going to search a Masterpiece and he's going to drop it, and then I have no out to it in my hand. So I had the Brilliant Fusion and the E-Telly that could have turned off the Inspector Border, so I tried to make, you know, Imduk to attack into the Majesty Maiden, hoping they didn't have duplicate traps, but he ended up having duplicate traps. So, next game. I start, and my hand is very lackluster, but it has Anti-Spell in it, so I set my Anti-Spell and set the three spells that I want to activate next turn, should I draw a monster, a combo starter, or whatever. I open Duplicate Called by the Graves. So I flip my Anti-Spell, he sets his hand, Past his turn, I top deck Venus. Broken. And so I summon Venus, he tries to Chalice, but you can't Chalice on my turn if you set it in response to Anti-Spell, because Anti-Spell says that you cannot activate that card until your next turn after it was set. So all my spells that are set are completely free game to activate, whereas his entire field of spells, possible traps, is not. And the only way I could have lost my Venus is to have him having duplicate traps to flip up, like a return plus an Apocalypse or Double Apocalypse. Uh, so at this point, I know that he doesn't have Double Apocalypse or, you know, Double Trap, because at that point he would have used that to out my Venus and end my turn and then probably kill me next turn. So at this point, I'm just trying to play to the best of my ability. He tries to Ash Blossom me. My set Called by the Grave gets him there. I flip my set uh, Emergency Teleport to get the Chosen out of my deck, which I specifically did not summon off my World Legacy World Chalice. You may have wondered why I summoned Lee and Guard Dragon, even though Lee had already used its effect. It was because I had the E-Telly for Chosen, and I only run one Chosen in this build, so I wanted that to be an option. You know, you could have summoned Chosen and then E-Telly for Ghost Ogre, but I'd rather just do it the way that I did it. So at this point, resolving Exodius and Venus, uh, that is one thing that I don't like about Dueling Book, is that there is no button over Exodius to just shuffle your entire graveyard back. There's convenient buttons on things like Desires and left, uh, and uh, that grass looks greener to, you know, banish 10 cards face down or to mill an exact number of cards comparable between your deck and your opponents. That's very good coding. I wish that Exodius had some sort of coding like that where you could hover over it and it shuffles all your monsters back. You can cl like you could click that option. Uh, but I mean that might just be way too hard to code. But at this point, I used the Ningirsu's effect to send send and I send his apocalypse to grave. So 
There's, I mean, he used to pop my Venus, but at this point I have game on board by swinging with Exodius and dumping a vanilla. Obviously, I don't want to activate the Soul Charge, which I can't even activate unless I send the Anti-Spell. I thought that I might, you know, Anti-Spell him sending the Chalice that I knew was there, but I figured I would hit the center card just to, you know, be a, uh, a honorable duelist and not just hit the card that I know isn't a card with a Grave Effect. Uh, but took a risk, but... It was fine because I still had game on board. He had to either hit my one of my big dudes on the field or hit my Venus to prevent me from summoning two more Shine Balls from deck, and he chose to hit the Venus, so at that point, I just had game on board. So It was a very interesting match, considering game three, I didn't get to play turn one. Uh, I could have played turn one and then, you know, possibly gotten blown out by an Amano Iwato, but that's kind of what Anti-Spell sort of is used against, is that Anti-Spell is actually just the best card against a Mono Iwato, because they have to commit their normal summon to a Mono, and if you have Anti-Spell up, sure, it's turning off your entire board, but they can't Rageki you, Dark Hole you, they can't get additional Tribute Summons for their spells, because they have to set them, all that sort of stuff, and then by the time that my turn rolls back around, where they could, you know, activate their traps or whatever that they're setting, the Amano is back in their hand. Uh, so there's a lot of little niche little nuances there of why I side triple anti-spell in this matchup and not cards that specifically out a mono Iwato like Solemn Warning or Bottomless or Book of Moon or stuff like that because anti-spell already outs that card just by the nature of not letting my opponent play their deck on top of summoning a mono. Uh, so there's things like that to consider. But anyway, that has been this video. Let me know what you guys think. Thoughts are in the comments down below, as always. Uh, like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Links is always in the description down below to my Facebook as well as my Twitch. If you want to catch the live streams where I play these games, definitely go follow that Twitch page. I try to live stream at least once a week. Uh, so if you want to catch them, then definitely go check out that link. But other than that, thanks to everyone that supports me as usual. I couldn't make these videos without the people that support me. But other than that, thanks for your time, as I've already said. Thanks for watching. And as always, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video. Oh, and let me know if you like this format of video in the comments down below. Almost forgot that. If you want me to keep doing this, then definitely let me know in the comments down below. But take care, guys.